In this video, we're going to talk about the sampling distribution and the sample proportion. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So when we're talking about sampling proportions, we should differentiate between the proportion of a population and the proportion of a sample. And we do that by letting p hat represent our proportion for our sample. That is p hat and p represent the proportion of our population. Now, similar to when we were working with binomials and we had P and Q, in the same thing when we're working with proportion of our sample or proportion, proportion of our population, uh, P and Q have a complementary relationship that is 1 minus P is equal to Q and 1 minus Q is equal to P. Same thing for the proportion of our sample, that's P hat. 1 minus P hat is equal to Q hat and one minus Q hat is equal to P hat. Now when we're talking about our sample distributions for our proportions, we need to be cognizant of a few things. First, our sample, our observations must be independent of each other, and we must have a large enough sample to assume a normal distribution. And we'll talk about that in a slide R2. But first, let's talk about calculating the standard deviation for the proportion of our sample, otherwise known as the standard deviation of p hat, which is right here. And that is equal to the square root of p times one minus p divided by n. We can simplify that to the square root of p times q divided by n, uh, where p and q is the proportion for our population. Alternatively, when we're not working with proportions, but rather dealing with means of our sample, we can calculate the standard deviation of the mean of our sample or the standard deviation of y bar. And this is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. In other words, known as that is the square root of our population divided by the square root, sorry, the standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of our sample size. So just briefly, what do we notice about the relationship of n in this equation? That is, as the standard, as the sample size increases, that is, as n increases, your standard deviation should decrease. Okay. Alternatively, as your sample size gets smaller, your standard deviation will increase. Now, when we're talking about sampling distributions, we can assume a normal model for proportions, but to assume a normal model, there are a few assumptions and conditions that must be met. One of those that we have already talked about is there must be an independence assumption. That is our observations must be independent of each other. We also have a sample size assumption that is the sample size of N must be large enough. And when we, we can talk about that a little bit more, but in our conditions, our sample must be randomized. That's part of our independence assumption. There is a 10% condition. And importantly, the 10% condition must be that the sample size must be no larger than 10% of the population. Okay, oftentimes we don't need to worry about that because quite frequently our sample will be nowhere close to 10% of the population. But if we're dealing with a very elite population or a very small population, we need to be cognizant of that 10% rule. When we exceed the 10% rule, we apply the finite population correction factor to our standard deviation. Um, if it falls below 10% of our population, um, it's okay. Our assumption and condition has been met. And then finally, we have our success failure condition. That is n times p must be greater than or equal to 10 and n times q must be greater than or equal to 10. So our sample size times our probability of success must be greater than 10, and our sample size times our probability of failure must be greater than or equal to 10. So once we've checked our assumptions and conditions, we can apply a normal distribution to our model, and when we do so by just calculating a z-score as we've done before. Um, if you need to revisit the normal uh, distribution, see the videos on the normal distribution. Um, and when we calculate our z-score for the proportion of our sample, all we're taking is p hat, that is the observed proportion of our sample, minus p, that's the proportion of our population, or our expected proportion, divided by the standard deviation of the, of the proportion of our sample, that is p hat, our standard deviation of p hat.
So that's our Z score. And just a reminder, how do we calculate the standard deviation of P hat? Well, that's the square root of P times one minus P divided by N or square root of P times Q divided by N. Okay, where P is the proportion of our population and Q is uh, the proportion of the complement of our proportion of our population. And then finally, this kind of all builds into what's known as the simple central limit theorem. And that is that the mean of a random sample of a sampling distribution who can be approximated by the normal model, the larger the sample, the better the approximation will be. So in other words, the, cl the larger the sample, the closer to the true proportion of the population we can expect to receive simply by um, measuring more people, we can expect a closer proportion of the sample relative to the true population. So let's go ahead and put some of this into practice and we'll do a few pra uh, practice problem here. So an investment website draws a random sample of 250 investors from its customers. Suppose that the true proportion of smartphone users is, zero point, is 37% or 0 0.37. So A, what would the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the proportion of smartphone users be? Well, let's first write down what we know. So we know that our sample size, n, n is equal to 250. And we know our, our proportion of our population is 0 0.37, which means that therefore 1 minus p is equal to q. So 1 minus 0 0.37 is equal to Q. So 1 minus 0 0.37 is equal to 0 0.63 is equal to Q. Okay, so now that we've written down what's been given to us in our question, let's go ahead and solve for A. So what is the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample? So our standard deviation of the proportion of our samples, SDP hat, is equal to the square root of p times one minus p divided by n. Well, this is equal to the square root of 0 0.37 times 0 0.63 divided by our sample size, which is 250. So we go ahead and do that. So 0 0.63 times 0 0.37 divided by 250 and we take the square root of that value and we get a standard deviation of 0 0.03054 and we'll just leave it at four decimal points. So that's our standard deviation of the proportion of our sample. So we have done question A. So what is the probability that the sample proportion of smartphone users is greater than 0 0.37? Okay, B. So let's just look at this for a second. And we're going to ask ourselves if we can assume a normal distribution. So what we're told is um, we're told that we have a random sample. So we'll assume that the sample is independent. We're going to assume that we have a large enough sample size. Our respondents have been randomized. We have less than 10% of the population. We know that there are multi-millions of smartphone users, so 250 is certainly less than 10% of the population of smartphone users. And we have n times p, n times q greater than or equal to 10. Well, 250 times 0 0.37 is greater than 10. And 250 times 0 0.63 is also greater than 10. <clears throat> And if you don't believe me, 250 times 0, 0 0.37 is 92.5. So this is greater than 10. And 250 times 0 0.63 is 396 or 396 396.83. And this is greater than 10. So our assumptions and conditions for a normal distribution have been met. So when we're asked, what is the probability that the sample proportion of smartphone users is greater than 0 0.37, we can go ahead and calculate a Z score. So Z is equal to P hat minus P divided by our standard deviation of P hat. <clears throat> 
Well, in this case, the observed proportion of question is 0 0.37 minus our expected proportion, which is 0 0.37, divided by our standard deviation that we calculated right here in question A, which is 0 0.03054. Well, 0 0.37 minus 0 0.37 is 0. And if we think about our normal distribution, we can draw our normal distribution, looks like this, and we're centered around a z-score of 0. Of course, we're given our z-score is equal to 0, and we know that it's perfectly symmetrical about our mean, which means that 50% of our observations fall below 0 and 50% of our observations fall above zero. So therefore, the probability that the sample proportion of smartphone users is greater than 0 0.37, well, we can write this, the probability that Z is greater than or equal to zero is equal to one minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to zero. So this is one minus 0 0.50 which gives us a probability of 0 0.50. Of course, you don't really need to do this last step. Um, simply knowing a z-score of zero will give you a probability of 50% greater and 50% less is sufficient, but I wanted to show you how to do it. Question C, what is the probability that is between 0 0.32 and 0 0.42? So let's just draw this out and imagine what they're asking. So again, we're assuming a normal distribution here. We're centered around a proportion of 0 0.37, and we're asked the proportion of 0 0.32 and 0 0.42. So 0 0.32 and 0 0.42. And we're asked to calculate the probability that it's in this green shaded region here. So let's go ahead and just solve. So Z is equal to the proportion of our observed proportion minus the proportion of our population divided by the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample. So we get 0 0.32 minus 0 0.37 divided by our standard deviation that again we calculated here in A of 0 0.03054. Just double checking, yep. So 0 0.32 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054 gives us a z-score of negative 1.64. And then we can do a calculate our other z-score here. So z is equal to 0 0.42 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054. So 0 0.42 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054 gives us 1.64. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we can look up our Z table in a second, but let's just draw it out. Like, I enjoy drawing things out, so we'll draw our standard normal curve here. Centered around a Z score of 0, and we have negative 1.64 and 1.64 and we're asked what is the probability that it's between these two z scores so in other words what is the probability that negative 1.64 is less than or equal to z less than or equal to 1.64 well this is simply going to be the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.64 minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 1.64. Okay, so let's go to our Z table and look up the probability of 1.64. So we go here and we find 1.6, whoops, 1.64, which is 0.2. 94950. So 0 0.94950 minus, then we find negative 1.64. So negative 1.64. So we look up negative 1.6, we find 4. 
So negative 1.64, which is right here. So 0 0.050. Minus 0 0.0505. So we do 0 0.9495 minus 0 0.0505, which gives us a probability of 0 0.899. And then finally, we do our last, uh, we have two more questions here. So what is the probability that it's less than 0 0.32? So we're going to calculate our Z score here. So Z is equal to 0 0.32 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.0, just kidding, 0 0.03054. So 0 0.32 minus 0 0.37. My apologies, this should be 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054, which gives us negative 1.64. Again, we just calculated that probability in the previous question. So we're centered around zero. We have a Z score here of negative 1.64. We're asked what is the probability that it's less than that? So therefore, the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 1.64 is simply equal to the probability of negative 1.64, which we looked up in our Z table already, to be 0 0.0505. So 0 0.0505. And then finally, our last question what is the probability that it's greater than 0 0.42? So Z is equal, oops. Z is equal to 0 0.42 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054. So 0 0.42 minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.03054, which gives us a Z score of 1.64. We've seen this before. So our standard normal curve looks like this, centered again around zero. And we're given a Z score here of 1.64. But this time we're interested in what is the probability that it's greater than that. So the probability that Z is greater than or equal to 1.64 is equal to one minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 1.64. So we're going to go to our Z table and look up 1.64. So 1.64 on our Z table, 1.64, Zero point nine four nine five. So one minus zero point nine four nine five. So one minus zero point nine four nine five gives us zero point zero five zero five. So the probability that Z is greater than zero point four two is equal to zero point zero five zero five. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.